From that 70s show to NCIS and the Oscar-winning Encanto, Wilmer Valderrama has had a diverse career that spanned decades. But his dreams of stardom began when he was a young immigrant from Venezuela. And he's sharing his journey in an inspiring memoir that's arriving at the perfect time called An American Story, Everyone's Invited. Please welcome Wilmer Valderrama. <laughs> Well, this memoir is fantastic. Thank you. So I much. love it that it's in English and in Spanish. Sí, se so habla español. Sí, sí, <laughs> sí, seguro que sí. So now you moved with your family from Venezuela to Los Angeles when you were 13 years old, mm -hmm. so your father could find better work. You didn't speak any English, and in the book you write about what it's like to be a kid in this country who doesn't understand the language. Tell us about that, especially when you wrote about just something as simple as asking, yeah. where is the bathroom? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, first of all, thank you so so much for having me. It's been, uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been here. I think last time I was, I think, promoting Handy Manny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Handy Manny! Yeah, it, was, it was a long while ago. Um, but thank you for asking that. You know, it's, yeah. it was really interesting to relive all those triggers, all these mm. moments, you know. Um, when I was, when we, were, when we were writing about that, um, I started thinking about the simplicity of just like, asking where the bathroom was mm, yeah. or like being at a store and saying like how much is this yes. i mean these little things that we take for granted because we're just flowing with life um became the biggest task like you had to work up the courage to walk into a gas station and and you know ask for the key oh, you know like yeah. i know look at that guy <laughs> I mean, full of life. Look at that. It's just, uh, <laughs> so cute. Um, but yeah, it was it was one of those moments where um, you 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 can't you couldn't take that I exchange for granted. And uh, you know, you are 13 years old. You think you figure out life. You mm -hmm. think you oh, oh, I think I'm pretty cool. And then you come to America. No, you're not cool. Like, <laughs> you don't know how to speak the language. And uh, and learning how to speak English around that time of your life when you're doing this transitional evolutionary time of like who are you yeah. as a young man is was really challenging will you share that your family struggled financially when they came mm -hmm. to the states and you started just as a teenager going out on auditions yeah. you got a lot of rejections but yeah. eventually you landed a part that would change your life playing fez on that 70s show which yeah. lasted eight <laughs> seasons what was that what was that moment like realizing you landed it now what was the experience like being on such an iconic show i mean it was um it was interesting, right? Because it was the first moment where um, the delusional dream of saying like, oh, maybe I could do that too. You know what I mean? Like the idea of you watching Desi Arnaz growing up and you're thinking like, well, first of all, the funny story you know, talk about in the book is, is, is that I grew up watching Desi Arnaz and I still have an accent, even though I've been here since 93, you know? But, but the I've idea, been here since 1980. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> Know what you're saying. Deal with it, folks. Yeah, no, no, for sure. It's what you see is what you're gonna get, you know. Right. But but watching this your in Spanish in Venezuela and then mm. coming to America and then watching him in English, I was like, oh wait a minute, he has an accent. <laughs> I'm like, now I really can do this. Like now I can really do this acting thing, you know. And and uh, but yeah, it was it was a really uh, incredibly validated moment, you know. I think at that point when when that show came to my life, it was at a time where my family and I really needed it. Mm -hmm. um, we were rent, we were late in rent, you know, for like three months, and you know, we were eating dinner every other night, and mm -hmm. you know, and like you know, it, it feels it, it feels like it sounds sad, but if you know anything about Latinos, we just turn the music a little louder and we just eat tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, and you say th that '70s show launched your career, though, and from there you went on to create and star in other television shows, like the animated series Handy Man. Yeah. You starred in movies like Encanto, yeah. and you. You've been starring on the hit show NCIS since 2016. Yeah. Now, yeah. all of this has allowed you to accomplish your goal to support your family. You speak of the bills and trying to make ends meet. What does it mean to you that you were able to do all of this for your family? Um, well, I appreciate that too. Uh, I gotta say, looking back at that, you know, I was just happy that I could finally take my mom to go to, to, to instead of going to the 99 cent store, that I can go to a regular grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. That like the simplicity of like saying like, instead of getting, 
you know, uh, cola, you get Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> or instead of getting flakes, you get cornflakes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was like the, the world of like just that little level up was the American dream. You know, the idea of making it back then, mm -hmm. you have to think of yourself as colorless. You have to think about the product you're serving the people and, and what you are really about. And I've always devoted my whole life to just entertaining. I love making mm -hmm. people laugh. I love telling stories. And, mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, you look back at the trajectory and you go, oh, I guess we were slowly healing mm -hmm. as a culture, you know, and um, now I look, you know. Now, now I'm, I'm very happy you're yeah. not colorless because you are brown and <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Heritage Month, yeah. and we're highlighting the contributions of our community. You have been a leading voice in this country around voting rights. Yeah. But I also want to talk to you about what's happening in Venezuela. This mm. is a very tough time down there. Nicolas Maduro yeah. lost the election, does not accept the results. Quite literally lost the election. Sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, people down there are going through a lot of distress. Yeah. So do you have a message for the Venezuelan people? And what do people in America need to understand about what's happening there? I mean, I'll start with the understanding and I'll follow with the message. I, I would say the Venezuela was, uh, or is, you know, the third largest producer of oil in the world and it's the first, mm -hmm. is the number one reserve, right? Mm -hmm. There's no reason why a country that rich in resources who once exported so much natural mm -hmm. resource um, should be in a situation like this. We, I mean, we should be a, a, you know, South American Dubai, yeah. you know, yeah. when you really do the math. But uh, for what it's worth, you know, um, in that moment, seeing the slow deconstruction of what corruption has done to mm -hmm. that country, how it destabil this, you know, destabilized the, 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 the fruit and the, and, the, and the forecoming of the country, mm -hmm. it really put the people in a very, very compromising position. And, and when you start really, really digging in and knowing, look, I have my, my dad's sisters are still there. They're still mm -hmm. in Caracas. So I very much so know from the ground what's, re what's really happening. Um, no one can live uh, with, a, you know, with an average minimum, you know, uh, income of $3 a month. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and having the government give you a bag of food so at oftentimes is expired. I mean, we're, we're spending so much time in what divides us and how we're different that we forget the commonality of why we do love when we look at the American flag. And um, I, I appreciate it so much because, you know, again, this is a land that has given millions of people around the world a beacon to follow. And, you know, we, we're, we're such an example of where, when things can really happen. So, you know, full circle to Venezuela, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to think about it, but, you know, a, a small message I would say to them is, you know, every time there's an election, you see a louder Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see more people on the streets. You see a more a more scientific way of going about this. You see an approach to it that's that you know that um, that doesn't sound like civil war, but sounds like like it's just enough. And and I think that uh, Venezuela is um, you know moments away from getting their their Venezuela back. Mm -hmm. And I uh, I hope they believe it. I hope they see it. I hope they feel it. And I hope that they can see themselves for the country that they can be. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for all your success and all the work that you're doing. Thank you, thank you. Thanks to Wilmer Valderrama. His new book, An American Story, is out now. Scan the QR code to buy the book. And members of our audience are all going home with a copy. <laughs>